Hey guys, come on in, join today's live session. It's Monday afternoon and um, I just wrapped up my last meeting for the day and thought I'd come on and answer some immigration questions that you guys may have today. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York, working with clients nationwide through McBean Law. Guys, reach out to us at 888-462-4006 or go to mcbeanlaw.com um, to request an appointment with us, okay? Now I see that folks are coming on. And as you're entering this live session, say hello, say hello, where you're watching from and how you're feeling today on this Monday. Now I see the live stream is up. Perfect. Friends, read our success stories. At McBean Law, we have terrific testimonials, success stories. Go on mcbeanlaw.com forward slash success to see some amazing things that we have been doing for our clients. The year 2024 has started off so nicely for, for them, for our clients and for us. And um, we have already published January testimonials. February testimonials, and where we just started publishing March testimonials. So come on in, friends, and um, and and understand what we do here at McBean Law. Okay, by reading our success stories again, McBeanLaw.com forward slash success. And let's see, let's see, awesome, yay! I see everybody. Yeah, yeah, you're coming in. Thank you. Guys, let me know also how does the audio sound, okay? I'm going to just say um, a quick hello here um, in the chat. And um, I'll, our phone number, okay, for those of you who, um, who want to give us a call, our phone number again is 888-462-4006. And we're reachable uh, by our email address. Our email address is info at mcbeanlaw.com uh, for uh, info at mcbeanlaw.com. Uh, the audio sounds very good. Lens Roosevelt Lambert says, thank you. Hey there, BJ from Chicago. Hey there, uh, Donna, Donovan, Leary, um, Aviator, Anna, Marie, nice to see you. Bernard, Prissa, um, Kate is in the house, Matthew, uh, Matthew from Malawi, West, uh, I was about to say West Africa. It is not West Africa. I know that it is uh, like the southern part, right, of Africa. Matthew from Malawi is watching. Guys, um, we're going to, and I'm going to answer some of your immigration questions. Excited to do so on this Monday afternoon. Now, um, you uh, will notice, firstly, that I'm just going to come live at any random time that I feel like coming live, and I'm able to based on my schedule. It works very well for me this way. I hope it works well for you as well. Uh, hey there, Kamal from India. Hey there, hey there. And, and guys, type in freedom now if you believe that freedom is important. Freedom is what immigration is about. Freedom is what McBean Law is about. We've been around for seven years. We've helped over 7,000 um, 7, clients over the years that we've been in business and we work on complex marriage cases. We do um, removal of conditions cases. We love doing those as well and helping you if you are out there and you had um, applied for a green card through your spouse and you got the two-year green card and now you're ready to do your 10-year green card, but you've encountered problems um, along the way. Either you're no longer with your spouse or you're with your spouse, but things have gotten messy in the relationship. We're the ones to work with when that happens. If you'd like to try to get your 10-year green card on your own, we're the ones to work with um, for that process as well. We do the I-751 waiver um, for our clients um, to allow them to get their 10-year green card and citizenship. We do naturalization cases, complex naturalization cases. If your case was denied uh, by USCIS, we like to look at that naturalization denial and see how we could uh, maybe do a refiling or go to a hearing for you and get you through to the finish line. Um, we also work with clients on um, every form of adjustment of status on the business side as well as on the uh, family side of adjustment of status. 
status. Humanitarian cases, we do the victim visa um, case, U visa. We do VAWA, uh, domestic violence cases. Guys, if you've been a victim of a, uh, domestic violence, know that there is a way for you to get your green card, okay? Let me just... I'm seeing myself over there, and it, I just want to make a few adjustments, okay? So don't sit on abuse. Don't, don't accept abuse in a marriage because you do not have a green card. Don't accept the abuse. It's, it, there is a way that Congress created to help you get a green card if you've been a victim of domestic violence, okay? Now... Freedom is achievable, uh, Lewis says here, and I completely agree with you. David from South Sudan. South Sudan has been on my mind. Uh, David, I would love to connect with you at some point um, about uh, some things. South Sudan, contact our office. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's get into some immigration questions today, um, and uh, we'll take it from there for a few minutes answering your immigration questions. Again, 888-462-4006, okay? 462-4006 is our office number, the team, we're here, we're working, and we'd love to meet with you. Um, we have in-person appointments. I just had an in-person appointment, and we have a few more coming in today for another attorney at our, our firm. Uh, we do video meetings. We do telephone meetings. I really like to do the video meetings, guys, because I'd love to see who you are and what you're um, facing, okay? So now um, at McBean Law, let's, uh, let's see. Let's... Uh, Someone, let's start off with this question that I'm seeing here um, from Shade. Shade asks, how can you get a green card if you are on a work permit? So your work permit is connected to some other application, okay? It's connected to some other application. What is that other application or petition? Did you apply for asylum? Did you apply for, uh, did someone file an I-130 for you? It's connected to something else. Or if it's not connected to something else, is it because you're in um, you're under ice supervision you're checking in with them um, is that the, how you were it was able to get your work permit work permit is always attached to some other type of process um, in most cases okay it's never usually just a standalone not unless you were granted let's say deferred action if you were granted deferred action because of cooperation with the government on an investigation or you were granted deferred um, action based on a medical condition that maybe you're facing that is very, very serious or a relative of yours is facing. Guys, it looks like I'm frozen. Let me know. Am I frozen or can you guys still hear and see me well? Let me know. Am I frozen? Am I still there? Can you guys see and hear me? It looks like I am live on my end, but for a moment there, it looked like I was frozen. So let me know what it, what uh, the situation is on your end. Um, I've frozen. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me know. Someone says that, okay, you could see and hear me well. Okay. Very good. Okay. So work permit is connected to something normally. All right. For most cases. So I would want to know how were you able to get the work permit in the first place? And, um, you know, is there, what basis do you have for a green card? All right. Thank you guys. I see that I'm back. Uh, I'm, I'm doing well. Someone says, um, what is the turnaround time for a green card through remo removal of condition based on your clients? Um, so it's, you know, truly it's, I, I don't have that data. Okay. I don't have that data at the top of my, on the top of my, uh, in my mind right now, but I can tell you that last year we saw some really good results with the removal of conditions, um, eight months for some cases, even some cases where the client had a very significant background with a fraud allegations on the record. Um, uh, so eight months, I don't know how long, how much longer those cases are pending. Um, but USCIS automatically gives grants an extension of 48 months these days. Okay. 48 month extension. All right. Um, 
So you should expect that it, it will be pinned in as you know for that lengthy time. But we haven't seen it. Um, we haven't seen it pinned that long. And based on our work, we really have not. Okay, now um, let's see. I don't know anything about Canadian immigration law. Every country has their own immigration rules, okay, and law. Um, so uh, we do not provide that kind of counsel at McBean Law um, about Canada. Uh, if you do have a, a petition pending, however, in the United States and you're thinking about leaving to go to another country and, and obtain residency there, just know that your process in the U.S. will be ending, okay? And so you have to have an attorney look at what that case is and what your chances of success are before you leave the United States because you don't want to make the mistake, and we've seen this happen sometimes. People make the mistake thinking, I'm just going to go to Canada and apply for asylum there. I might get through under that system versus here in the U.S., and then they are rejected. They are even turned around, turned back, not even allowed entry into Canada. Um, and then, boom, they get placed in removal here, okay? Uh, as soon as they turn back, um, they come back, they're placed in removal right away at the border. So be very careful. Have an immigration lawyer study your case uh, history very well before you think about leaving the United States and you have a petition. Um, you have a petition pending. Bl uh, Blessing is asking, Blessing Izzy, Izzy Ray, can one get an E-1 visa or L-1 visa while still fighting one's case in immigration court? That is such a good question. So the E and the L are temporary non-immigrant visa, non um, visas. And so you're, you, if you're in removal proceedings here in the United States, um, there's a reason for that. I don't know what got, what placed you or landed you in removal proceedings, but the government has should have uh, a basis for having you in removal, okay? And if there's some violation on the record, whether it's related to your overstay or related to an immigration fraud or way, uh, misrepresentation problem or criminal reason or uh, you false um, unlawful entry, whatever the case may be, they have a basis there's a basis for you being in removal proceedings. And as such, you're, um, you know, you've got to focus in on that, focus in on either getting your status straightened out in court or getting out of removal proceedings. You can't leave the United States to go to a U.S. embassy for an L visa um, or an E visa and then just come back in that freely when you're in active removal proceedings. If you'd like to speak with us further about this scenario, book a consultation with us so that we could talk with you one on one and see what's going on with your immigration court case because you say you're still fighting, which means that you're in, sounds like you might be in active proceedings right now, meaning it's it's not over, okay? Um, someone is asking, is there a way to speed up the I-601A waiver application? The I-601A is taking a very long time nowadays, two to three years. Um, to, you know, it, there's a way to expedite it. If you're, you know, you, there's a way to put in an expedite request. Um, there's that, and there's also the possibility of suing the government as well. I don't know how long your application has been pending, um, but you could maybe talk with us. You could talk with us about those options. Um, now, let's see. Um, Uh, what else can I answer? Someone says, uh, I am a green card holder in the U.S. My daughter, I'm a green card holder. My daughter is here is on a student visa. Can I file adjustment of status? I want third and I want 30 for her. So, uh, what you should look at is the visa bulletin and the visa bulletin for the, I don't know if your daughter is, um, will be in the F2A category or the F2B category, but in either case, she will need to, you won't be able to do the concurrent 
filing for her, okay? Um, let's see something here. I see April 2024. Okay, so hold on one second, guys. The April 2024 Visa Bulletin is out, okay? And I'm looking at it for the first time. <laughs> I didn't even know it was out until a few seconds ago, okay? So when you look at, let's go down, okay. So if your daughter is here in the United States on that F1 student visa and she wants to do adjustment of status, the chart B, table B, I should say, will be what you will need to look at to determine whether you know, she can move forward with adjustment of status. So I see that for the F2A category for most countries, I'm leaving out, uh, well, for all, really all, September 2023, okay? And so what that means is if, it's, if there was a C there which said current, which means current, at that point you would be able to do a concurrent filing, but not in this case because a prior a visa is not yet available because of this um, the September 2023 cutoff date, so to speak. All right. So and then if she's in the F2B category, it's even a lengthier wait, January 2017. Um, for those who a visa would be available for those who had um, applied before this uh, January 2017th date. So that's just another way of looking at it. So so the answer is no, no adjustment of status at this time for her. Uh, OK, her priority date will need to be current. All right. Whew. It's like more people are available in the middle of the day than at nine o'clock at night, uh, which is great. Okay, so what other questions do you have for me? Um, let's see. Uh, someone is asking, uh, do I know a good juvenile immigration attorney? Um, uh, uh, niece came to the U.S. without inspection due to abuse in Peru. She's under 18. So, um, so, okay. So your niece, she's under 18, Robert, and she's here in the United States. She, uh, entered without inspection. Um, she was abused back in Peru. Okay back in Peru, not here in the United States, but if she's here and um, she meets the requirements for SIG, she could possibly meet the requirements for SIG, I don't know, special immigrant juvenile status, and that's an immigration process that allows a youth to self-petition for a green card. Now, depending on which state she's located and that state law will govern um, uh, whether or not she can get what they call a predicate order from the family court system in her city where she's located. Once she's able to obtain this predicate order, then she could then uh, do this special immigrant juvenile status process, SIG process, okay? Um, that's if she's eligible. She can have a consultation with us to determine whether SIG would be a good fit for her um, so that she can get a green card. All right. Um, let's see. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for that. Um, James is asking if someone has TPS, temporary protected status, can they apply for a green card? Um, well, just by, you know, although you may have TPS, TPS alone, TPS doesn't provide the basis for you to apply for a green card. You, TPS it pr provides a temporary status to you, lawful status to you, so that you can work and you can even travel, and the government will not deport you while you have TPS, okay? And so um, it doesn't lead to a green card. It is not a pathway to a green card by any means. So we would have to assess whether you have a pathway to a green card. Um, all right. Um, someone is asking, um, Joda is asking, uh, says, well, what does it mean if USCIS estimates a decision time of one week? I wouldn't rely heavily on 
any of those um, alerts or status updates because they could change on you at any time. I've had some people tell us that uh, USCIS says, oh, we'll get back with you in 30 days, and now a year later they still haven't heard anything, all right, because they're doing further investigation into that case. So um, I wouldn't rely too heavily on those status updates. Come on in, guys. As you're coming in, just say hello. We're in the middle of um, a Q&A session on this Monday afternoon. Again, contact us at McBean Law if you uh, would like to speak one-on-one -on -one with an attorney about your immigration case. Uh, you may reach us at 888-462-4006 or go to mcbeanlaw.com, put in... Um, submit the form that's on our page, and someone from our team will contact you, all right? Uh, 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 I, so Orlando is asking, Orlando says, I have a question, can an undocumented person get deported? Uh, driving without license in the state of New Hampshire. So Orlando, driving without a license is not a basis to deport someone. It is not in a, a, a removable offense. What is removable, however, is if you are arrested um, or um, if you are arrested for something like that, and then they ICE places a detainer there, attaches to you and ICE take you into custody and, uh, you know, after learning, of course, that you are undocumented, well, at that point, they can absolutely place you in removal uh, proceedings to remove you based on the fact that you're here in America without documents. And that alone is enough to get someone removed. However, the driving record or you driving without a license, that's not what they will put on that NTA notice to appear. It's, you know, you are here, you're an alien, they still use that word, um, alien, unlawfully present, something like that will be on that kind of NTA. All right, so that's how they do it. Someone says, my PD, Adama says, my Prosecutorial discretion request was granted. Congratulations. We had one granted out of Chicago, which we testified about on Sunday in our Sunday's newsletter yesterday. My PD request was granted, um, and ours was a joint motion to reopen and terminate. Someone says, do I need? Do I have to start the immigration process again? So what was the PD that was granted? Was it PD to dismiss your case? Um, was it um, a joint motion to dismiss your case and get you out of removal proceedings? Or was it like a joint motion to reopen an old case and terminate proceedings? If it was um, just a dismissal, Great, still great, great news, right? Still great news. And we had a dismissal last week too. Um, and I think this morning, but great news, great news. But now what? Now what we'll have to examine, are you eligible for a green card otherwise through USCIS? So you could speak one-on-one -on -one with an attorney about that, um, about wh whether you're eligible uh, for anything else in uh, at USCIS level. If it's a joint motion to reopen and terminate, well, that's a different scenario. You have already proven to the government that you have a pathway to a green card, which is why they've agreed to help you. Um, and once the, you know, I don't know where your case is at or what, what the process is really, but once jurisdiction shifts back over to USCIS, you can continue the process with a 485 green card application process if you're eligible for that. All right. But congratulations on that. What do you think will happen with DACA? Alma is asking. Ooh, it's hard. You know, I, I, I have my. You know, I think it's you know, Obama. Um, you know, the courts agree with this. The courts have been saying this that Obama did some overreaching, and so uh, they found that DACA. Uh, there's some ele illegal e illegality with respect to DACA. Um, I think that if it does go all the way back up to the go up to the Supreme Court, um, it's possible that they will they could get rid of it. It's really possible that it could go away. But I also think that the government will have to put in some sort of stopgap measure, something where they could move people into a different type of program and wait for that program to be challenged along the way. I 
I just think it would be highly irresponsible of the government to allow so many people to go out of status by some hard deadline. Very difficult thing to overcome politically. It's not a great political move. Um, so I think that politically speaking, they may try to put something else in place to, to, to help people transition to a different status. Um, and in order for that different status to be permanent, like a green card, it will take passing the DREAM Act and making it law. That's really what's needed, okay? So that's my opinion as far as what could happen with DACA. So someone says, is there, are there any solutions to illegal illegal re-entry after deportation. So what Claudia is asking about there is maybe it's a permanent bar problem, okay, perma bar problem. Um, so if you were deported and you entered back, you came, you returned to the U.S., illegally, you have triggered the permanent bar, if, particularly if you came back in, um, you know, un, well, if you came back in un, without inspection. That's it. You get your permanently barred. So humanitarian, there is a humanitarian process, maybe the U visa. That's the one that I always point to. That's like the default for me. Uh, U visa allows um, a waiver um, for you to ask for that forgiveness through that particular process. It may, it's not guaranteed. It's not a slam dunk. It's still very difficult to obtain it. But um, that's a possible solution there. All right. Someone, I didn't have, we don't, we, we don't have free cons, uh, consults. Uh, someone, so just, just an FYI, we don't do our consultation fee. I'm glad to know that you were pleased with our service last year. Thank you so much for that. Um, we do not offer free consultations, guys. Consultation fee begins at 250 and mine is 300 okay? Um, so if, so so Long Johnson is asking, are you an immigration lawyer? Um, yes, I am. You can go to mcbeanlaw.com to take a look at our uh, my, my bio and the other attorneys' bios on our website to see who we are and what we've done over the years and what we're doing now. All right. Um, let's see. Um, Yanti says, "I hello, I am in removal, but in this December, my daughter is turning 21. Where's the question? Where did it go? <laughs> it's good. Okay. My daughter is turning 21. Can she ad do adjustment of status for me? I'm in removal proceedings. Well, so we would love to work with you. We would love to help you. Okay. Um, come in for a consultation. Uh, we would look to see where are you in this removal process. And, um, are you an active removal or do you do you have a removal order? Uh, we would want to know either in either event we are, we are able to manage the the strategy and so um, when you're if you this issue of whether you're eligible to adjust status um, while you're in removal is one that starts with us asking how did you enter the United States? to begin with, right? Because if you entered a certain way, it is possible for you to get a green card through even through adjustment of status um, at from USCIS. And then you would have to go into the court system now to do some things on the removal side to terminate everything there. But if for most people who entered, however, with a visa and you've overstayed and then you've, you're placed in removal, you won't be able to adjust your status through USCIS while you have a removal action, whether that action is still pending or whether that action ended years ago with a removal order, you cannot adjust your status. You would have to firstly get an I-130 approved, then you'd have to get back into your removal process to terminate things. Uh, am I still, is this seamless? I had a call coming in. Um, <laughs> I'm not using my other cell phone, which is what I usually use for market. And for this, I'm using my personal cell phone. And so I just had a call coming in. Am I still seamless or am I still going here? Yes or no? Am I on? Yes. Yes or no? <laughs> just keep it brief. Yes or no? 
Um, I see. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, BJ. Um, so now, uh, where was I? With the removal, um, so you can get, so, so those individuals who entered with a visa cannot um, finish, cannot get a green card through adjustment of status if they're in removal precedent, okay? They would have to get the I-130 approved and then close everything, terminate everything on the removal level, and then they would have to do adjustment of status once everything is closed out, uh, terminated in court, okay? So uh, that's how that works. Okay, you guys have great questions for me today. Uh, see how much better I think during the day versus at night. And I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, when I watch those old lives, I say, oh my goodness, really? Really? Okay. Net, let's see. It's okay to laugh, guys. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So I'm going to laugh. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to laugh. Um, okay. So someone has said, is there a waiver for people who come into the country illegally with someone else's document? So serious question. Good question. So um, that's considered fraud, right? So this is fraud. Entering the United States with someone's document is fraud. The, and there is a waiver that is available for fraud, okay? So to get that waiver approved, however, you'll need to be uh, eligible for it, number one. And then if you entered with someone else's documents, there's some additional things that are needed to make a case like that work. Uh, you could reach out to us so that we could have a one-on-one -on -one with you to um, ask you some questions and go into um, some, some uh, other issues uh, to discuss the dynamics with you, okay? Um, okay, let's see. Someone is asking, can your case be terminated with the TPS? We've done that. We have done that um, in removal. When a, If a client is placed in removal and they have TPS, that's a great basis to get the case dismissed. Um, so, And, and that, that process is usually not, not um, a lengthy one that... Uh, you know, you'd have to wait on too long, that can be done. You could reach out to us about that process, okay? Um, let's see. My good afternoon, um, Richards is uh, saying, I want to file for my stepdaughter. She is 15, let me move these over. Uh, she is 15 um, years old, um, but... She has a three-month-old child. Um, do I file for both? So, um, Richards, um, are you a U.S. citizen? Are you a U.S. citizen? Because if you're a U.S. citizen, U.S. citizens can only file an I-130 for one person and only one person can get through through that I-130. It's different if a person is a green card holder and they're petitioning for a spouse or a child, whether the child is under 21 or over 21, so long as that child is unmarried. The green card holder parent can petition for that child and then the grandchildren who can be attached to that case, okay? But that could only happen if that's a green card holder parent. Um, not so with a U.S. citizen um, I-130 process. Okay, so there you go. Thank you for that, Richards. I see your answer. Um, okay, so what's the question? So BJ is asking, my vowel was transferred to another location. Okay, so, uh, the government has all rights and um, ability to shift caseloads around based on whatever internal issue they have going on, okay? They can certainly move cases around from one service center to another one that's completely out of every, anyone else's control, okay? Um, crewman, adjustment of status, there is a bar you'd have to... Um, it's a very complicated situation from time to time. We do meet with those who came in on the C or D visa. Uh, there are some things that we would need to look at about um, were you trying to transit through America or not. Um, it's very difficult to most, I would say, 
you know, percent of individuals who have stayed that way, stayed in the United States, who came in on that crewman's visa cannot adjust their status. They can get through, however, by going back home after getting an I-130 approved. They could go back home after getting a waiver, I-130 waiver, um, uh, and then go back home, not unless they have other problems on their record like misrepresentation and other things like that. Those issues, um, the waiver happens much later in the process at the U.S. Embassy level um, in those types of cases. But contact us if you'd like to talk further, if you have a petitioner, a pathway that to a green card, but you came in by that crewman's visa, we could uh, help to dissect it for you and let you know what I mean by these additional steps that you'll have to go through in order to get a green card, okay? Um Someone is asking, Julieta says, can we start the NVC process if the I-601A waiver is still pending? So um, so you've already started the NVC process when you pay the fees because the fees are required, okay? The fees, paying the fees is a required first step to the I-601A. So the process has started. I would say do not finish the process and get yourself in a, a queue for um, an interview until after you get your I-601A approval. Then you can wrap up the process there and then be documentarily qualified. So uh, that's how we that's how we would handle that, okay? Um, Rodrigo says he has a, real, a visa religion. He overstayed after the visa expires. So then you're going to, in a situation like this, we would want to know, um, do you have another pathway to a green card? Because that's whether the visa is a religious, uh, the R1, or whether it was a B1, B2, doesn't matter. You overstayed. Once you've overstayed, that label is on you. That's on your record. That's going to... Um, require some additional hurdles to overcome. Watch my playlist on visa op uh, green card options for visa overstays. That's uh, on McBean Immigration TV, okay? My wife is older than me. Will that be an issue with filing for me? No, it doesn't have to be an issue. Um, I've always said, and I still believe that, age is just a number, number one. Age is just a number. With immigration, I still think that way too, because um, we've helped couples who had huge gaps, 30, 40 year gaps, and they were still able to get their green card. Yes, immigration will consider it a flag and they will want to drill down a little bit and see whether this is a genuine relationship. But if it is genuine, it's genuine. Whether it's a 30 year, 40 year gap, it's genuine. So if they drill, then you could handle that, but ha handle it in a marriage um uh, handle it with, with an immigration attorney. Okay. Handle it with an immigration attorney. Come on in guys. Come on in again, reach us at 888-462-4006 at McBean law, um, 006 or at info at McBeanLaw.com. That's our email address. And the purpose that you, the purpose of your email is not to ask an immigration question because we won't answer a question like that. Uh, very busy days. Uh, the purpose is to request an appointment. If you'd like to request an appointment, we're here for you. Go ahead and um, call or email us. All right. Um, let's see. Someone says immigration came to our apartment and my wife didn't open the door and I'm going through a divorce. How bad will it be for my future immigration? So here you have um, Fanko, Fanko um, Charles says that USCIS came to his house. It does happen. And in fact, uh, every week, almost every week, I meet with people who say, you know, we had a home visit or I read a notice of intent to deny in which... They, it says we came to your home and here's what we found or didn't find. This is very. This is something that happened with um, fewer cases. When you look at the millions of cases that are filed, very few of these happen to people, but we do see them frequently 
at our practice. Why? Because we address complex immigration problems like that. So the fraud unit got involved in this case, okay? And the wife didn't open the door. They're now going through a divorce. Um, it's, I would say to you, sir, that uh, we would need to obtain all of your records to see how bad the record is, what do they know at so far, and um, what is your path moving forward? Do you have a path forward on your own? Why are you guys getting a divorce? What happened in the marriage? We would examine all of that, okay? We would look at all of that to see if there's a way that you could go forward on your own or not. Now, um, if you cannot proceed on your own now, what you know, what if you have a petitioner down the road, what will the likelihood of you succeeding look like down the road? But again, if you have a petition, we would love to look at that later on for you. If you do, when you have that petitioner um, uh, in your life, then it makes sense for us to really get in there and study your history and look at the chances of success with this new petitioner. Um, so you could reach out to us at McBean Law for a consultation so that we could co we could uh, speak with you more. Um, so now let's see. Uh, you guys are what? You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, well, you could cons for, so someone is asking whether they could consult with us on the diversity green card lottery process. Um, you can do that. Um, we, you know, if here's how we get involved in that. Despite the fact that I put out a video last week about that issue for the very first time, someone talked me into that. I was reluctant. Um, but I, I said, okay, let me try. Let me try. It didn't feel so good and natural, but I did it. Anyway, so, and I don't think I'll be producing any more videos on that process, just so you know. Now, here's how we help people, though, with this. Um, if, if there's fraud on the record in connecting with that diversity visa process, um, misrepresentation, and you're here in the unit, you came through with the visa, and now you're trying to bring in other family members here, but there's some misrepresentation on the record and other things like that. We consult and we help people to understand what, what the consequences are and some other uh, action. So that's how we help, okay? That's how we help. <laughs> Patrick, Patrick, why are you here? Patrick is here um, on McBean Immigration TV on March 11th at 3 in the afternoon. If Why are you here if you're going to just say send them all back to the border, Patrick? That's not very neighborly and nice. Um, so guys, in the comments, leave everything um, above board, okay? But Patrick, thank you for being here. Um, but that comment is... Not appreciated, okay? Um, okay, so someone um, says order, uh, so someone has wants to know what does this mean? They received an order from the immigration judge uh, saying that the case had, has been administratively closed for the following reason, for respondent's LPR spouse to file an I-130, no DHS objection. I did answer this question last week. I answered this one last week, and, uh, I, and I'll just do it one more time, and then that will be it. Um, and what I said that with respect to this, your, the, your lawyer, or I don't know who, but um, the, on the record, uh, you're basically stating that you have a green card holder spouse who will file an I-130 petition for you. And as such your case will be administratively closed, meaning taken off the docket. You will not have an upcoming hearing, not unless you recalendar your case or the government puts you back on um, in order for you to then say to the government, my I-130 was approved through my green card holder spouse. So you really got lucky there. This is a very good move for you. Uh, in, other, for, in other jurisdictions, judges say, well, during normal times, we're not in normal times with removal anymore, but during normal times, the judge would say, um, let's take an adjournment, let's do an adjournment, you come back in nine months or next year and tell me what happened with this I-130. Let's just adjourn, you're, which means you're still actively going through the process and you have a hearing coming up, but in this particular case, you're off the docket. 
and you that you then go through your USCIS process with your green card holder spouse, which has taken a few years now, four years. I've been telling people uh, as uh, so. You know, after you get that approved, DHS didn't uh, object to it. They had no problems with it, which is great. So after you get that approval, you've got to get things revved up again with removal. Okay, so that's what it means. All right, awesome. Now, um, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a timeout. Okay, so I just place uh, Patrick in timeout. Okay, next. Um, Um, someone says, I'm a U.S. citizen and my spouse is on the F3 category since he was married. Um, unfortunately, they divorced last year. Can we apply for F1? When you say, can we apply for F1, um, what are you talking about? <laughs> the F1 visa? Um, or are you, are you saying the F1 category? Now, let's assume it's the F1 family category, okay? Um, if it's the F1 category, um, which is unmarried son or daughter of a U.S. citizen due to the divorce, um, yes, yes, the answer would be yes. Um, you can go into that category um, and you, things will, you, they could switch you and put you into that category, and your case could be uh, accelerated depending on what your, um, what the priority, yeah, under the F1 right now, according to the April visa bulletin, the government is up to February 2015 compared with 2009 in the F3 category. So, yes, you can get your case, um, your, your category change, and you can proceed under that F1, all right? Oh, right. Um, now, um, guys, I have to, yes, F1. Oh, F, uh, I don't know. Uh, guys, I'm going to have to jump off, okay? I'm going to have to jump off. It was so nice speaking with you guys this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed this uh, live session. Again, McBean Law is here for you. We're here for you. So reach out to us at 888-462-4006 or mcbeanlaw.com or at info at mcbeanlaw.com. I'm going to um, uh, uh, be on social media this week with Facebook Live. Um, I'll check in with Facebook and check in with Instagram as well. So follow me on social media if you want more. <laughs> if you want more, follow me. Thanks so much for joining me today and have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.